What's up Disney Infiniteers? Welcome to today's video where we cover all the scrapped content that never came to be in the Disney Infinity series. We are celebrating 10 years of Disney Infinity today with a special video. Over the years we've learned about all kinds of scrapped and or unreleased content. So today I wanted to present all of you, the fans, with the ultimate guide to scrapped content. So grab yourselves a drink, maybe some snacks, and let's dive right in. First, let's start with scrapped characters. There was once concept art for the Abominable Snowman, aka the Yeti, from Monsters University and Monsters Inc. Concept art of MU student townspeople highlighted him as well. So naturally, it was assumed that he was considered a cast member for the Monsters University playset back in 1.0. Despite him appearing in various concept art and posters for 1.0, he never actually made it into the game even though he was spotted on marketing material before it launched. The Marvel character Badoon showed up in some concept art for Disney Infinity 2.0, and it was later revealed that there was even a 3D render made for the character. However, Badoon was scrapped before he made it into the series. One theory for his exclusion is most likely that Disney did not own the film rights to the character. Even though there are a few pieces of concept art, it's possible he was originally planned to be in the MCU and game, but was then removed from both. The Infinity team had concerns the ESRB might take issue with the player inflicting violence on other living toys, so they tried to use robots to mitigate those concerns, which is why we even saw a robot version of Badoon. However, this version never made it into the game either. The CDA agents from Monster Inc. appeared in early concept art for Disney Infinity 1.0 as well. It was presumed that they were going to be included as enemies in the Monsters University playset, but never showed up and were scrapped for unknown reasons. Additionally, in a piece of early concept art of non-playable characters for the Monsters University playset, Charlie Proctor, George Sanderson's scare assistant and a minor character from Monsters Inc. was spotted. Since he never appeared in the game, we can only guess to what his role would have been. We can also see Fungus, Randall Boggs' scare assistant from Monsters Inc in the concept art as well. He was also scrapped for unknown reasons. Dr. Heinz Doofenshmirtz was also once planned for Disney Infinity 2. Even though he was never seen in early gameplay footage or demos, the popular Phineas and Ferb character had been found in the coding of Disney Infinity. While he was just a costume in the final game, it's unknown what exactly his character was supposed to do. It's speculated that he was a scrapped playable character or even simply just a cast member. There is also a fan theory that there was originally supposed to be a Phineas and Ferb playset and that Doof could have been a boss. However, there is no evidence to back that up and the reasons for scrapping him still remains a mystery. Graham, one of the antagonists from Cars 2, appears in many early pieces of concept art for Disney Infinity. Prior to 1.0 releasing, he actually appeared in multiple pieces of concept art and despite this, he never actually made an appearance in the game. He seems to be a scrapped enemy alongside others and is featured in concept art shooting missiles at other Cars characters. While it's unknown why he was ultimately scrapped, the rumor is that the original Cars playset changed from a more spy-themed adventure to a racing game. In a piece of early concept art, Violet can be seen with her brother Jack-Jack, who is levitating above her. While he never ended up appearing in Disney Infinity, he was mentioned by Miss Incredible in the playset. Whatever his role would have been in the game is up for speculation, as it's unknown why Jack-Jack was scrapped. Jiminy Cricket was meant to introduce the opening cinematic of Disney Infinity 4.0. Basically, the concept would have had Jiminy floating down on his umbrella to narrate the introduction. Utilizing the storybook, just like in the intro from the film it appears in, Disney's Pinocchio. Disney Infinity animator Thomas Estrada once shared it was a big challenge getting Jiminy's movements just right. He also shared an animation test for him and said that there was no plans of Jiminy ever becoming a figure that he knew of. Either way, 4.0 never saw the light of day. Despite all of this amazing intro concept, 
for the cancelled game. Pieces of early concept art of Omnidroids depicted some of them that were smaller in size than others. It also suggested that the ranged Omnidroids were supposed to deploy them by spitting them out the top of their heads. Now this idea never made it into the game or playset. However, the concept of spawning a small enemy was later implemented in 2.0 when the large symbiotes produced the symbiote spawn. The Muppets appeared in Disney Infinity as non-playable townspeople and power discs, but believe it or not, there was more that was planned. A former Disney Infinity artist posted designs for PVC figures of the Muppets too. In his blog, he said, quote, not sure if they are out yet or will be, these were done about a year ago they wanted an angular look with facets and that's what they got and this style really matches existing disney infinity figures suggesting that these renders he shared could be concepts for game add-ons that never came to be and were ultimately scrapped oscar and theodora from oz the great and powerful were actually spotted on marketing material and mock-up displays prior to the release of Disney Infinity 1.0. While the validity of these characters were questioned back in the day, I was able to investigate and indeed find the concept art matching this once iconic and mysterious marketing image. They were planned as playable characters, but were ultimately scrapped as the movie wasn't expected to do well. Prince John from Robin Hood was spotted by fans in very early concept art for 1.0 as well. While we did see some Robin Hood content in Disney Infinity, the reasoning for Prince John being scrapped is currently unknown. Princess Aurora from Sleeping Beauty also has an interesting history with her first appearing in early concept art for Disney Infinity 1.0. Interestingly enough, this early concept art also showed off Captain America and Simba too. Over time, even more concept art of Aurora was found in a Disney Infinity 3.0 character design video. Now, Aurora herself does not appear in the final game, but I think it's safe to say that she could could have been a potential figure planned at some point in development. Pua from Moana was a planned mount for Disney Infinity 3.0. We all know about the scrapped Moana playset, but I wanted to give Pua some love as the character would have appeared in the game and we also saw images of this post cancellation. Going back to the early Cars concept art for Disney Infinity, we can also see Sarge making an appearance towing Luigi in this image. Sarge's final appearance in-game was only a passing mention by Flo, who tells us that Sarge is simply on vacation. Another character from Cars, Sidley, a spy plane from Cars 2 who works with Finn McMissile, was featured in this piece of early concept art promoting the Cars playset for 1.0. While the character never ended up appearing in the game, it's not known what his exact function would have been. It's possible they just didn't have time to finish flying characters. Simba appeared on two pieces of concept art of Disney Infinity with other playable characters, Captain America and Princess Aurora. The first piece of concept art shown here was an early concept for Disney Infinity 1.0. Later on, we saw more of Simba from a Disney Infinity 3.0 character design video, so they were definitely looking into adding him. I remember once John Vignocchi, former VP of Disney Infinity, once revealed that the reason why Simba wasn't already added into Disney Infinity was because of character mechanics and how it was a challenge to design a playable four-legged animal. In this early concept art, for Disney Infinity Monsters University playset, we see Smitty. Like with many other characters on this list, his role and reason for being scrapped is unknown. Sparky from Frankenweenie appeared in very early concept art for Disney Infinity. It was later revealed that they were exploring a potential playset, which I've covered on this channel before. The Underminer from The Incredibles also appeared in some promotional art as Sparky did. Additionally, in Disney Infinity 2.0, more concept art of the Underminer appeared, fully fleshed out from the previous concept art we had all seen before. Pretty cool. Lastly, the Yeti from the Matterhorn Bobsleds and Expedition Everest attraction at the Disney parks was found in Disney Infinity 1.0 game files. In the final game, he only appears as a costume, but it was really cool to see his art pulled out from the game files as well. Now, let's talk about scrapped figures. 
Arlo from The Good Dinosaur was originally planned to be a playable character in 3.0. It was later revealed that higher-ups at Disney didn't have high expectations for the film, so he was never released. Spot was the only playable character from the film, and Arlo appeared as a power disc in the form of a mount. Baze Malbus from Rogue One A Star Wars Story was planned to be a playable character in the Star Wars Rogue One playset in Disney Infinity 3.0. However, with the cancellation of Disney Infinity, he never arrived. We did receive the figure designs and the Rogue One characters were nearly ready for release. Bell and Beast from Disney's Beauty and the Beast were also planned to appear as playable characters characters in the Disney Infinity series. Tragically, never came out due to the game's cancellation. One thing to note is that both were designed off of the 2017 live action version of the story as the characters were planned to be released alongside the film. Luckily, I was able to share concept designs right here on this channel back in the day, so fans were able to catch a glimpse of them for the first time. Captain Rex, a popular character from Star Wars The Clone Wars and Rebels, was yet another scrapped figure. He was planned to be a playable character in the Disney Infinity 3.0 edition. The figure was designed both with and without his clone trooper helmet. This is likely due to his final design still being decided upon prior to the cancellation. The design without the helmet depicted the older, scruffy version of Rex seen in Star Wars Rebels, further indicating he was likely to arrive with the Rebels playset. Darkwing Duck was hinted back at E3 2014 when a developer on the game stated that Darkwing Duck was very close to being a figure for the 2.0 edition, but was sadly scrapped. Now, there was no figure design that was ever shared with me, so what you see on screen is a fan-made figure I've posted on this channel before. While we got a costume version of Darkwing Duck, as well as his weapon and vehicle, fans always wanted him as a figure. This includes John Vignocchi as well, who shared that Darkwing Duck was also heavily considered as a playable character for Disney Infinity 3.0, but instead they focused on Olaf, who was voted in by fans of the game in a fan poll. We were that close to a figure. Doctor Strange was very close to arriving as a figure too before the game was cancelled. However, I was able to exclusively reveal the figure design years ago on this channel. Now one thing I have learned is that he was going to be released around the time they released his film, and he and the other Marvel characters were going to be be compatible with the Marvel Battlegrounds playset. Prior to Disney Infinity releasing, early demos and gameplay footage featured Ferb Fletcher from Phineas and Ferb in what appears to be a playable character. While he appears as a costume townsperson, Ferb, who was expected to show up as a figure during 1.0's figure releases, sadly never arrived. Ferb's character model was later found inside the game's files. The reason for Ferb not being a figure was later revealed by John Vignocchi, who told a fan directly, quote, he almost made it, decided to do Perry instead. He was the most popular with the fans. Goofy was also considered as a playable character in the Disney Infinity series. We first saw Goofy through a game's concept art within the game itself, but was scrapped before making it out to the concept phase of development. Later on, a former Avalanche Software employee posted these images of Goofy's figure design in his portfolio. Goofy would have been another member of Disney's Fab Five to join Infinity's figure line, but sadly, it never came to be. Hera was another cancelled figure. Not only was her character icon found in the files of the Disney Infinity Gold Collection on PC, but her figure design was shared with my channel for the world to see as well. She was going to be a playable character alongside her fellow rebel characters, but Infinity was cancelled before she could be released. Jafar was another figure planned for Disney Infinity as well. In early concept art, we saw Jasmine fighting Jafar Snake from afar. While this never came to be, we later found out that he was indeed planned to become a figure and was scrapped due to the cancellation. His figure design was revealed by a former Avalanche artist, and he looked great. We also found out that his special move would have allowed enemies to fight for him with the help of his staff. Jafar would have been prominent in the Disney Infinity 4.0 Kingdom reveal that came out after the cancellation, but more on that later. Avatar 
also made its way into Disney Infinity as well. Concept art for Jake Soli and Neytiri were shared on this channel back in 2016. This concept art for the two figures was very early in the process, but it's still fun to think what could have happened. Jin Erso's figure design was also unveiled to us at one point. Jin was the main protagonist in Rogue One, and we knew that she was planned for a playable character. However, her design was not unveiled until after the cancellation. Prior to this, we were only able to see Bay's Malbus. After Jin was revealed by an artist, fans were able to see figure designs for their droid companion, K2SO, as well. And more excitingly, we got our eyes on the figure design of Sheru Emwe as well. Ultimately, they were all planned to be released around the Rogue One playset prior to Infinity's cancellation. And one last note, Cassian Andor was also supposed supposed to be a playable character in the Star Wars Rogue One playset, but was ultimately scrapped. Remnants of his inclusion were found in the game's coding. Sadly, we never saw any kind of concept art though. Moana was supposed to be the next release in Disney Infinity 3.0, but sadly never arrived upon the game's cancellation and the closing of Avalanche Software. We actually saw our first images of both these figures in Moana and Maui leaked in promotional material. I was able to share the high res up close look at both on this channel years ago as well. Both of these figures were finalized and ready for mass production alongside the playset, but sadly, never came to be. Peter Pan was my most desired Infinity figure, and man, the story is crazy. At the Infinity Toy Box Summit in 2015, the Toy Box artists in attendance were given the opportunity to choose the next figure for 3.0. And then it was later announced at the D23 Expo that the artists had chosen Peter Pan. While he was complete and ready to release, Disney Infinity was sadly canceled and he never made it to market. I was able to showcase his figure design to the world on this channel all those years ago, and this one particularly was special to me. Some Peter Pan figures were fully produced and sold online. I was eventually able to purchase one and posted a video on getting this rare collectible years ago. It's literally still my number one favorite Infinity collectible by far. I was able to showcase details on the back of the box, which said, quote, Neverland's favorite Lost Boy uses his acrobatic flying skills while wielding his dependable dagger. I was also given the first ever footage of Pan fighting in-game during Infinity's development, including his dagger attack moveset, and flying. Now despite fans never receiving him, Peter Pan likely goes down as the biggest scrapped Infinity figure in the series history. But I'm really glad we got to see so much of this iconic character over the years. If you're interested in more details about Pan, make sure to check out more of my Peter Pan videos right here on the channel. Spider Gwen was an upcoming character that was planned for Disney Infinity 3.0, but was scrapped upon the game's cancellation. I was able to showcase her figure design right here on the channel, and she looked awesome. Some of the prototype figures of Spider Gwen had been produced and showed up online too. Too. A fan reached out to me once and even sent me their figure to showcase in a video. This scrapped Disney Infinity figure definitely bums me out considering how great she would have been in Disney Infinity. Another scrapped figure was Ursula from The Little Mermaid, who was set to release as a premium figure. More on those later. While we never got any concept art for her, it was later revealed by former VP John Vignocchi that the function of premium figures were for raid battles and those included Ursula. Victor Frankenstein from Tim Burton's Frankenweenie was set to be a playable character prior to Infinity releasing. John Vignocchi also mentioned on Toy Box TV Live on September 10th, 2015 that Frankenweenie was supposed to get a playset with Victor as a playable character, but was ultimately scrapped. John Vignocchi once revealed that Zerg from Toy Story was, quote, scrapped as a playable character because of his final boss status in the Toy Story and Space playset. In fact, modders were able to showcase Zerg as a playable character, which I've shared in a video before. So it's really cool to think he was originally planned to be one prior to him being scrapped. Now, let's talk about scrapped playsets. 
The Frankenweenie playset was planned at one point, but ultimately scrapped. Early on, developers worked on prototypes which showcased the color changes. You can see the unique art style implemented in these screens, but they were eventually put on to power discs instead when the playset was scrapped. Later on down the road, we were able to see concept art around ideas that were going to be implemented in a potential playset. Players would have ascended to the top of the windmill, hit a button to damage the windmill, windmill just like the movie, then players would have made their way down to the lab area as shown in this image. Now it's pretty cool to see these concept images, it's always cool to know what could have been. Moana's playset was revealed by various sources years after Infinity's cancellation. First we were able to see an intro for the playset which was animated, though unfinished, and it looked fantastic, matching the film's vibe. As for the playset, much footage came out over the years and now I have even more information on the playset according to anonymous sources. The playset would have seen users sailing, inspired by The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, as well as puzzles similar to the Zelda series too. The playset is said to have had different locations to sail to, a myriad of dungeons to explore, special items to collect and upgrade, and much more. I was told by one person that this playset had a bunch of tasks as well as an open world feel to it. There was also Maui's magic fish hook that would have been upgradable throughout the playset, which had unique tech built into it such as parting the seas. The playset may have never seen the light of day, but we've had a ton of information and footage shared over the years. It's easy to see why it clearly would have been one of Infinity's best yet. Rogue One's playset was underway when Infinity was cancelled. What we do know about it is that modders were able to showcase some of the unfinished levels which were pretty far along actually. One other new note I've learned recently is that there was going to be a quote arcade mode within the playset that featured mini games similar to the hollow games in the Force Awakens playset. Now while we don't don't know much more about the playset, we've seen a myriad of areas that could help us all but guess what could have been in this scrapped playset. Now let's talk about the scrapped power discs. The Baymax costume change power disc was a costume change power disc for Baymax that would have changed his costume from his normal red armor to his green gray armor from the beginning of the movie Big Hero 6. This costume change could also be seen in Baymax's official gameplay trailer and preview for his character in game via the Hall of Heroes in this clip here. As you can see, this alternative costume power disc looked really great and fans always wondered what happened happened to it. John Vignocchi later confirmed on Twitter that the costume would be exclusive to the PC version of Disney Infinity 2.0. However, the disc was never released in game and they later confirmed that quote, the disc is still digitally exclusive. John Vignocchi also once confirmed on Twitter that Stitch was at one point going to have a costume change power disc that would give Stitch his Elvis Presley outfit from the movie. He said, quote, We've looked into it, we were going to have to pay money to the Presley estate, so we backed off it. Obviously, this never came to be in Disney Infinity, but it's a fun tidbit nonetheless. Now, let's talk about scrapped toy box toys. In early beta footage of Disney Infinity 2.0, an extra toy box builder called the Toy Box Castle Builder was spotted in the Toy Box toy selection menu from early demos in an interview. It used an updated model of the Grand Duke costume that was never used in game. It's assumed that this toy would have been used to build structures utilizing pieces from Cinderella's castle building set, but was scrapped for unknown reasons. In early promotional images and videos for Disney Infinity 1.0, a mysterious red helicopter shown here was spotted. While similar in design to Calico's helicopter, this one does not appear in the game. Fans have speculated what it could be, but it's an unknown red helicopter that even I'm not sure what franchise it's from. Any ideas? Additionally, in early promo screenshots for 1.0, another unknown yellow car was spotted too. While it's similar to Tony Stark's sports car, it has a completely different body design. So, we don't know what franchise it's from or even what it's called, but fan theories say that it could be an early version of an Autopia car or 
just simply a generic yellow car. Curiously, the car reappears in promotional art for Disney Infinity 2.0, but it's still a big mystery to fans this day. Now, let's talk about scrapped miscellaneous stuff. In early demos for Disney Infinity from Comic-Con 2013, fans spotted the Good Morning America set from the ABC Network morning TV show, Good Morning America. It was originally supposed to be a set piece in Disney Infinity, but never made it into the game. Early demos also showed off a PAX and Tools menu with a tool called the Invisibility Wand. Now this tool was scrapped and never made it into Disney Infinity and was quite possibly replaced by the Invisibility Device. The Ion Blaster is a gun used by Emperor Zurg in the Toy Story films. While it appears in the code, it never made it into Disney Infinity. This is likely due to the fact that it was meant to be used as Zurg's default weapon if he was playable. The rescue helicopter, as shown in this concept art, is a scrapped vehicle in Disney Infinity. It was seen in early advertising for the game. Additionally, from its concept art, the helicopter had a large magnet on the back. It's unknown what that magnet would have been used for. There was a scrapped Tron track from Disney Speedway. I recently made a video about this, but modders were able to dig out footage of this scrapped level from Disney Speedway. This looked pretty amazing for a racetrack. In early footage of Disney Infinity, the developer showcased a sundial located in the Monsters University playset. This sundial could be activated by the player to turn the environment from day to night. We even received concept art of what this looked like up close. On one side of the sundial was an image of the sun, and on the other was the moon. According to developers, the playset would have had a completely different set of missions in the daytime as opposed to the nighttime. It was ultimately scrapped, however, as they opted into an automatic day-night cycle for the playset instead. But it's fun to look back at this idea. In other early concept art, we got our first glimpse of the Omnidroid spawner. It seemed that a rocket would fall from the sky and spawn Omnidroids. The spawner itself never made it into the game, but the idea was utilized in 2.0 with the Sakaran pods. We've also seen scrapped Infinity base concepts too. Starting with the concept art for the original Disney Infinity base in many forms and different variations. These include the final base design itself with different aesthetics, and even some really different layouts too. Now I've covered all these concepts in videos too, so if you want to see all of them, make sure to check out the full video. Even better, Bill Roper once shared a few custom base prototypes that blew fans away. One featured a custom Avengers base that reflected their battles in the 2.0 Avengers playset. It featured a war-torn New York landscape and looked pretty sweet. The other was this custom sculpted frozen base. The details were breathtaking and he mentioned that none of this was plastic but sculpted and pretty heavy. Ultimately, these custom base prototypes were scrapped, but it was a sight to see nonetheless. Premium 12-inch figures were planned prior to the cancellation as well and were going to have some unique characteristics. Besides being completely completely massive compared to the regular figure counterparts, the poses on these were different too. Inside the game, these premium figures would have had different and unique movesets. The designs would light up on the base, giving them a very premium and unique feeling. The price point was set to be $45 USD each. To date, nine characters have been confirmed to have been in development as 12-inch figures, and we've seen a bunch of concept art for most to all of them. This includes Buzz Lightyear, Darth Vader, Elsa, Hulk, Hulk Buster, Jack Skellington, Lightning McQueen, Ursula, and Yoda. Though it should be noted that data for premium Luke and Obi-Wan can be found in the game files too. Additionally, these characters would have been used in raid battles, after which you unlock a normal size character. Lastly, let's talk about Disney Infinity 4.0 
Kingdoms. Disney Infinity 4.0 was set to be an action-adventure sandbox game developed by Avalanche Software and published by Disney Interactive. It was the planned sequel to Disney Infinity 3.0 and was initially slated to release in 2017. The game would have followed multiple plots, with a different one in each playset like its predecessors. We also know that a custom intro featuring Jiminy Cricket would have narrated an intro similar to the film Pinocchio. And while we do not know what would have been included in the 4.0 starter pack, we do know that 4.0 would have included material in the form of playsets, including Cars 3, Star Wars The Last Jedi, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, Coco, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and Thor Ragnarok. Now we did receive footage of Kingdoms and learn that two new features were to be introduced in 4.0 that would have changed the way the game worked in a big way. First is a toy box story mode and the long awaited update of all 1.0 and 2.0 playable character skill trees and move sets to be updated with all of the 3.0 mechanics. The toy box story mode would have allowed characters to play through a set of missions in the toy box itself with any character you desired, which would have addressed a big criticism that fans had with the play sets from the first three editions. One level would have included an Agrabah area with new Agrabah guard enemies and a Snake Jafar boss battle. Man, we really missed out. Now it's unknown how these films would have been featured in the games, whether as play sets, toy box only figures, and or power discs, but we do know that Hasbro was also approached to help design the 12 inch figures. Now if you wanna watch the entire footage and breakdown of Disney Infinity Kingdoms, make sure to check out this video on the channel. Woo! Now, this to date is the most comprehensive scrapped guide to Disney Infinity that I know of. And I'm sure there's a good chance we'll always learn new and exciting things about this amazing series. But I've made it my goal to share as much with the fans as I possibly can. And I wanted to thank all of you for the continued support. And if you're new, make sure to subscribe and check out all of the content I've covered with Disney Infinity all these years. I also want to thank the Disney Infinity wiki pages and many other various sources over the years for sharing so much amazing information. Disney Infinity turns 10 this year, but its impact on gaming will live infinitely. So Infiniteers, what was your favorite scrapped thing about the Disney Infinity series? What else did I miss? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for all the latest Disney Infinity news and content.